am about to get a call on my phone. There it is. I'll go ahead and answer. Hello. Hi there. Am I speaking with Adam? Yes, this is Adam speaking. Yo, 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 what is going on? This is Adam from Six Flow Automations here. And in this video, we're going to be building your very first AI voice agent using N8N and Retail AI. The voice agent that we're going to be building today is an automatic appointment reminder caller. As someone who's worked in sales for a long time now and running their own AI automation agency, I can tell you from personal experience that an automation like this is very valuable. So whether you want to build this AI voice agent for yourself or you want to sell it to business owners, this video is for you. Right before we demo this automation, I'd really appreciate it if you guys like the video, leave a comment and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get on to the demo. All right, so we'll go ahead and execute this workflow. And here we can see that I am about to get a call on my phone. There it is. I'll go ahead and answer. Hello. Hi there. Am I speaking with Adam? Yes, this is Adam speaking. Great. Thanks, Adam. This is Andrew from Six Flow Automations. I'm just calling to remind you that you have an appointment coming up on Sunday. July 20th, 2025 at 1 p.m. at Six Flow Road. Does that time still work for you? Yes, it does. Awesome. We'll see you then. Is there anything else I can help you with today? No, I'm all good. Great. Have a wonderful day. All right, so we are in N8N and we created a blank workspace, which is the first step. So the first thing we're going to do is add the schedule node. So we'll go ahead and add the schedule trigger, not the schedule node. Um, and we're going to want to set it to 35 minutes. The reason I do 35 minutes is that way it'll only call the, the prospect one time uh, before their appointment. It's going to be approximately 30 minutes to an hour before the appointment and say you have your appointment at this time. So it's an effective appointment reminder using this strategy right here, 35 minutes. And then the other thing is you're going to want to create a Google Sheet um, with this format. You can adjust it with whatever name you want, with whatever phone number, um, appointment time, make it, make sure it's within the next hour. Cause that's what it's going to be required when you're testing it. Make sure the appointment time is within the next hour. Um, cause then it's going to filter through properly and location. You can add other things, um, if you want to, such as end time, or, uh, you're going to be meeting with this person is very customizable. So this is just the basic things, the basic headings that you can do. So anyways, once this is set up, you're going to want to go ahead and add the Google sheets to your workflow here. And we're going to want to go ahead and connect it. So we're going to want to choose get rows in a sheet. Then you're going to simply want to connect that Google sheet. And one thing that is simple about this automation is that we're not putting any filters in Google sheet in this Google sheet node. We're going to be filtering in the next node with a code, right? So and I'm going to put the code in the description. It's going to be super easy for you guys. But yeah, this is, this is how the automation works. This is how I like to run things. Um, I just make it super simple. I have this Google sheet here. It's going to pull. And then the next node is going to do the filtering for all the leads that have an appointment within the next 60 minutes or the next hour. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we're going to want to add a coding node or a code node, right? And what we're going to want to do in this code node is we're going to want to set the mode to run once for all items like so. We're going to want to set the language as JavaScript. And then we're going to go ahead and put in this code. Not to worry, I'm going to put this in the description for you guys. You're going to be able to copy and paste it. It is going to be this exact code. As long as your appointment time in your Google Sheets is this format. If it's not the format, then the code will not work appropriately. Make sure the appointment time is within this format. And then the code that I'm going to paste in the description of this video is going to work just fine. All right, the next step that we're going to do here is actually build the voice agent in Retail AI. So to do that, we're going to want to go over to RetailAI.com and we're going to want to create an agent. So when we create an agent, this is just going to be at the top right corner. As you can see, create an agent, create a voice agent, and then we're going to want to click single prompt agent right here. Go ahead and press create. We're going to have this blank agent right here. So what we're going to do um, is paste in a universal prompt for this agent. So what a universal prompt is, is basically we're telling the agent who you are, what you're doing, what your goal is, and how you're going to do it. Um, so I already have a prompt here. I'm going to paste it in the description for you guys so you can just copy and paste it into your own retail agent. I'm going to go ahead and title this um, YouTube Agent um, July, which is the today's month. 
anyways so we have this you're gonna want to change change it as um according to you so you probably won't be using um from six flow automations for example you're gonna want to go through it and customize it as you wish um but it's very functional it's very functional so we can go ahead and press save and another thing we're going to do here is add two functions the first function that we're going to add is the end call function and the second function we're going to add is the call transfer function what the end call function it basically allows this voice agent to end the call so when it's time to end the call the voice agent can end the call itself and doesn't need the user to end the call so that's why we have the end call function and the reason we have the transfer call function is because built into the automation if the user wants to cancel or reschedule then the voice agent will transfer the call to someone who can make that reschedule and now in other advanced uh, voice agents we're able to automatically rebook the appointment by integrating with the the user's calendar but for the purposes of this video we're just we're just gonna make it so if the user wants to reschedule the appointment then the voice agent is going to go going to go ahead and transfer the call to someone to reschedule the appointment so they'll transfer the call to either the business owner or the receptionist of the business so anyways you're gonna want to transfer call and then you can go ahead and put in the number of the the business owner's number your number the the receptionist number that is going to actually reschedule the appointment so you can put that there and in retail, there's a bunch of other settings that you can go ahead and play with. Um, sorry, I didn't add transfer the call. I'll go ahead and do that. So anyways, in retail, there's a bunch of other features you can go ahead and play with. There's a knowledge base. So for example, this is where you would put in the business's knowledge base. So it, it, when the agent asks, is there anything else I can help you with? And then the person asks, oh, well, what are your hours? Oh, what do you guys actually do? We can put in the knowledge base that has all of that information that the voice agent can then refer to and answer those additional questions. Um, but that's just an additional feature. We're not going to go into that for this video, but it is important to know when you're building a voice agent. There's things like speech settings you can you can play around with just how the person talks. Same with um, the voice, how you know the voice of the voice agent. There's a bunch of things, a bunch of settings you can play with that we're not going to delve into for this video. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step now that our voice agent is set up we're gonna go and publish that later because we do need a phone number um, and you know what we're actually gonna do that now let's go ahead and add a phone number to this voice agent before we go back to N8N and to do that you're going to want to go to retail and then on the left side of the screen we're going to want to click phone numbers and you're going to want to create a phone number so whether that's buy a new number or connect your number via SIP trunking if you want to learn how to do that we have a whole other video on this channel made by Noah on how to connect your number via SIP trunking so you can go ahead and click that but otherwise I'm going to assume that you have a phone number so once you add your phone number you're going to want to click the phone number that you just got right here and then for outbound agent click the agent that you just made so we just made this YouTube agent July voice agent and then we're going to want to assign that number to this voice agent via outbound that is an important step great so now that we have that as you can see in your agents you have that phone number assigned to that agent which is great so let's go back to N8N here and we're going to add the final node. So the final node is going to be the HTTP request. And what this is going to do is essentially connect Retail AI to this workflow. So what we're going to do, the way we're going to configure this, is we're going to set the method to post. And we're going to put in this URL right here. I will go ahead and paste it in the description. This is going to be the same URL for all the users. So if you want, you can go ahead and copy it directly on the screen. Otherwise, I will leave it in the description for you guys to copy. Um, and that is it. So for authentication, we're going to click none. So we're going to leave it as none. That is the default. And then we're going to go ahead and send headers. When we set headers, send headers. The first parameter is going to have a name of authorization, okay? And then the value is going to be bearer, and then we're going to put our API key in here. So the way you get an API key is to go to Retail AI. Um, I suggest having both tabs open, by the way, because we're going to be navigating back and forth quite a bit. So you're going to want to go to Retail AI, go to keys right there, um, go ahead and add a key, create an API key, name it, copy it. And then right after 
um, bearer in N8N in that parameter, go ahead and paste that key in, okay? Once you do that, we can go ahead and add another parameter, and that parameter is going to say content dash type. Great. And the value of that is going to be application slash JSON. Sound good? All right. So the next step that we're going to do within this HTTP request node is add send body. We're going to toggle send body on. Once we do that, we're going to leave the body content type as JSON and the specific body is going to be changed to using JSON. That's a, that's a good detail. It's an important detail. So once again, the specific body, we're going to set it to using JSON under the send body um, section. Great. When we do that, we're going to copy and paste this code in right here. I am going to give you guys this. However, one quick note is that it's going to be a little different for you guys. So basically, this from number is going to be the same number that you bought in retail and paired it with your voice agent, right? So that's where you're going to put this from number. So mine is that number, the, sp the, the specific number that I had bought, and I put it right here. An important detail is I added plus one before the number. That is an important detail. As we continue to configure this node, I'm going to go ahead and execute my previous node so I'm able to map these things. Um, but yeah, everything is actually here, so it might automatically map for you guys. But um, yeah, you're going to want to map the two number. So the, the two number is basically the phone number of the person in the Google Sheet, like this number right here. We're going to map the appointment time, of course, and we're going to map the location. And that is all here, right? This is all located in the dynamic variable section. So we map the name, map the phone number, and we mapped the time. And then the last crucial idea here or the crucial thing here is to change the override agent id what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to copy and paste the agent id from retail into this so to do that we go back to retail we go to agents and we go back to the voice agent that we just created and we're going to want to click this agent ID here. You're going to have your agent ID located at the top left corner of your voice agent and we're going to want to copy that and we're going to paste it right where it says override agent ID and that is it and if we execute the step, let me just check right here. we are going to get the same call. So there you have it. I mean, you can do your own customization here um, in retail, play with retail, play with the prompt, make sure it, it, it sounds how you want it to sound. It says what you want it to say. It's all adjustable. You can even adjust the Google Sheets here, um, but play around with it. Let me know in the comments if you want if you want any suggestions or if you're having any problems, let me know in the comments. But if you received any sort of value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you like the video and even subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. We have a lot more good content coming out. Other than that, guys, take care. Have a good day.